Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I did a video the other day about Ticketmaster and Live Nation and how the Justice Department wants to go in and possibly break them up because of their monopoly power. And uh, Jason and a few other people sent me notes and said, hey, Steve, Ticketmaster's back in the news again. This time they've confirmed a massive breach after stolen data of theirs has been found for sale online. And by the data of theirs, it's the data of customers of theirs that they presumably should have been safekeeping. So this is a story by Lawrence Abrams from bleepingcomputer.com. Uh, the story is widely reported, but I just love the name bleepingcomputer.com. Live Nation has confirmed that Ticketmaster suffered a data breach after its data was stolen from a third-party cloud database provider, which is believed to be a company called Snowflake. On May 20th, 2024, and this is a quote, Live Nation identified unauthorized activity within a third-party cloud database environment containing company data and launched an investigation with industry-leading forensic investigators to understand what happened. And that's something they put in a filing with the SEC. And that's always interesting because I know a lot of people have asked me, this, Steve, whenever we hear about stuff that these companies have said, um, why do they say these things? Do they have to? Well, if they're a publicly traded corporation, they often have to tell the public what they're doing so their stockholders know. Not everything, but some things. On May 27, 2024, a criminal threat actor offered what it alleged to be company user data for sale via the dark web. This is all, again, from the SEC filing. We are working to mitigate risk to our users and the company and notify and are cooperating with law enforcement. As appropriate, we're also notifying regulatory authorities and users with respect to unauthorized access to personal information. The breach has allegedly exposed the data of over 560 million Ticketmaster users. The company states they do not believe the breach will have a material impact on the overall business operations or its financial condition. So they're saying, hey, look, the data of over 500 million users has been exposed, but we're going to be okay. We're just whoo, whoo, dodge the bullet. We're fine, everybody. We're fine. We're fine. This admission comes after a threat actor has been attempting to sell the Ticketmaster data on a hacking forum for half a million dollars. The allegedly stolen databases contain roughly 1.3 terabytes of data, including customers' full details like names, home addresses, email addresses, phone numbers, as well as ticket sales, orders, and event information. Uh, in a conversation with a threat actor, uh, somebody told Bleep and Computer that there were interested buyers in the data. They believe that one of the buyers that approached them was Ticketmaster themselves. <laughs> Can we buy it back? When asked how they stole the data, the threat actor said they can't say anything about this. However, more information was revealed on how the threat actors gained access to the ticket matter database and possibly the data of many other customers. A uh, person from a consulting firm spoke to one of the threat actors behind the attack who claimed they were responsible for that breach as well as some others and said they stole the data from the cloud storage company Snowflake. According to the threat actor, they used credentials stolen using information stealing malware to breach an employee's account, which they used to exfiltrate information from the company. This information included unexpired tokens that could be used to create session tokens and access customer accounts to download data. The threat actor claims they've used this method to steal data from other companies, including Anheuser-Busch, State Farm, Mitsubishi, Progressive, Neiman Marcus, Allstate, and Advance Auto Parts. You know, <laughs> I hope they haven't got my Neiman Marcus information. Progressive and Mitsubishi disputed the threat actor's claims, telling Bleeping Computer that there is no indication of any breach of their systems or data. Now, the storage company says the recent breaches were caused by poorly secured customer accounts whose credentials were stolen and did not have multi-factor authentication enabled. So the storage company says, look, somebody got in. If they got in, they were using credentials of somebody else. That's their fault for letting their credentials get out. It's an interesting argument. The company added that the attacks began in mid-April with customers' data first being stolen in May. Now, Snowflake has shared IOCs from the attacks so that customers can query logs to determine if they were breached. Meanwhile, consultants told Bleeping Computer that they had been investigating compromised Snowflake clients for the past few weeks and believe their tenants were breached using stolen credentials. Uh, when Bleeping Computer contacted Snowflake to confirm all these claims, uh, instead of disputing them, they said simply they had nothing further to share. Now, I mentioned before Ticketmaster, and you think to yourself, okay, they got my name. 
No big deal. My home address? Eh. My credit card information. Because see, a lot of these sites will ask you, would you like to keep your credit card information on file? And I would advise against doing that just because of things like this, because obviously having your credit card information on file might make your next visit easier, assuming you do it before your credit card expires. But, but the point is that by saying, no, don't keep it on file, and if they are true to their word and they don't keep it on file, then when something like this happens, they won't have your credit card information. Now, it reminds me of a funny story, but years ago, a friend of mine was uh, visiting the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and pulled into a little tiny roadside cabin along the shore of Lake Michigan. And uh, Lake Michigan hits the Upper Peninsula way up there towards the top. And he stayed there and he used a credit card. And it was an old-fashioned place with a ka-chunk, ka-chunk thing, you know, that you do with a credit card imprinter. And um, he said the next year he's driving, he goes, you know, I'm going to stop there. And he stops there and he pulls out a credit card and the woman goes, you want to use your credit card on file? And he's, what do you mean on file? And this, this is a long time ago. And she goes, what's your name? And he tells her, and she flips through one of those little recipe boxes and pulls out a little three by five card and she reads his credit card back to him. <laughs> and he goes, why do you have that? And she goes, oh, it's easier if I keep this information for you. And he goes, why? I've got the card right here. And she goes, but see, you didn't have to pull your card out. <laughs> you just wasted all that energy of yours pulling the card out. And he called me and he's like, is that legal? Like, what the? Uh, huh? <laughs> and it is remarkable how flippant some people are with other people's credit card information. However, when we're talking about 560 million users. That's a lot of people. I suspect those people are not all in the U.S., I, I suspect. <laughs> we could do some higher math on this, but I don't think we need to. So again, another problem with Ticketmaster. And this, of course, is another problem with, and, and again, if you just think of all the follow-on problems that you have from being a monopoly, if, you know, viewed from the viewpoint of the consumer. And that is that if there are a bunch, a bunch of smaller actors here in the same field and one of them got hacked, it wouldn't involve 560 million users. And so it's just, it's, I understand it's a minor point, but it's just another thing that's happened. So there you go. Uh, if you bought tickets through Ticketmaster lately, you might have some issues. Question is, this has happened before. Uh, it'll continue happening. And you always got to wonder, you know, what kind of operation these people are running. If they actually said that, oh, the people have got access to this data from the company, could use dual factor authentication, but they don't. But they don't. And I mean, I know regular people who have two factor authentication on everything. <laughs> everything. So it's the way you got to go. Bleepingcomputer.com reported that. And of course, Jason sent it to me along with a couple other people. And Lawrence Abrams wrote that Ticketmaster confirms massive breach after stolen data for sale online. And at the top, I mentioned I'd done a story on this recently. And I have to mention this. I got one of the strangest emails the other day because I said in a video, I did a video on this not so long ago, and that video went up the next day after the video I was referencing. I got an email from a guy who goes, um, Steve, uh, you are now suffering from dementia because the video that you said happened the other day was actually the day before. You could have said yesterday. And the fact that you don't remember that yesterday is the other day indicates that you've got dementia. Now, what's weird to me is that I would have thought that'd be painfully obvious, but I guess some people don't know this. These videos aren't live. So when I do a video today and you watch it, let's suppose that you saw this video on a Sunday. It's a possibility. So you saw this video on a Sunday. You're not watching it in real time. It was shot before you saw it. And... I'll shoot a video that'll go up Monday. I might shoot that video Sunday. I routinely shoot videos a day in advance just to give myself some buffer in case something goes wrong. However, I don't put the videos up in the order in which they're shot. Almost never. Like once or twice a week, I'm moving videos around and stuff because I decide I'd rather put that video up now than tomorrow, whatever. And so if I had said, I did the video yesterday about this, a week from now, I'm going to get a note from somebody who goes, Steve, I can't find the video you say you did yesterday. And if I said, oh, well, 
in the video it was yesterday, but the video is a week old now, so it's a week ago yesterday. They go, well, why didn't you say that? <laughs> so before you accuse somebody of being mentally ill or, or gravely physically ill or anything like that, you should probably stop and think for just a split second and ask yourself, is there a reason why he said the other day instead of saying yesterday? Because yesterday only makes sense if I'm referring to something within the video that couldn't possibly lead the viewers astray. But if it would lead the viewers astray, I would then say the other day or recently. So again, if you think, hey, Steve, you said it happened recently. It happened yesterday. Do you not understand that? Yeah, I know how days work. Okay, like I said, you're probably seeing this video on a Sunday. The day preceding Sunday, I'm guessing, is Saturday. And tomorrow, from my viewpoint, where I'm sitting right now, would be Monday. But if you watch this video on a Wednesday, tomorrow would be Thursday. And the day before would be Tuesday. Mind blown, huh? <laughs> Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. I believe it's better to know nothing than to know what ain't so.